To night, the Lord of the Eagles was filled with curiosity to know what was afoot, so he summoned many other eagles to him, and they flew away from the mountains. And slowly circling ever round and round, they came down, 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 towards the ring of wolves and the meeting place of the goblins. A very good thing, too. Dreadful things had been going on down there. The wolves that had caught fire and fled into the forest had set it alight in several places. It was high summer, and on this eastern side of the mountains there had been a little rain for some time. Yellowing bracken, falling branches, deep-piled pine needles, and here and there dead trees were soon in flames. All around the clearing of the wings of the wargs, fire was leaping. But the wolf guards did not leave the trees. Maddened and angry, they were leaping and howling round the trunks, and cursing the dwarfs in their horrible language with their tongues hanging out, and their eyes shining as red and fierce as the flames. And suddenly goblins came running up yelling. They thought a battle with the woodmen was going on, but they soon learned what had actually happened. Some of them actually sat down and laughed. Others waved their spears and clashed the shafts against their shields. Goblins were not afraid of fire, and they soon had a plan which seemed to them most amusing. Some got all the wolves together in a pack. Some stacked fern and brushwood round the tree trunks. Others rushed round and stamped and beat and beat and stamped, until ne nearly all the flames were put out. But they did not put out the fire nearest to the trees where the dwarves were. That fire they fed with leaves and dead branches and bracken. Soon they had a ring of smoke and flame all around the dwarves, a ring which they kept from spreading outwards. But it closed slowly in, till the running fire was licking the fuel piled, the fuel piled under the trees. Smoke was in Bilbo's eyes. They could feel the heat of the flames, and through the reek they could see the goblins dancing round and round in a circle, like people round a midsummer bonfire. Outside the ring of dancing warriors with spears and axes stood the wolves at a respectful distance, watching and waiting could hear the goblins beginning a horrible song. Fifteen birds in five fir trees, their feathers were fanned in a fiery breeze. But funny little birds, they had no wings. Oh, what shall we do with these funny little things? Roast them alive or stew them in a pot? Fry them, boil them, and eat them hot? Then they stopped and shouted, Fly away, little birds, fly away if you can. Come down, little birds, or you will get roasted in your nests. Sing, sing, little birds, why don't you sing? Go away, little boys, shouted Gandalf and answered. It isn't bird nesting time. Also, naughty little boys that play with fire get punished. He said it to make them angry and to show them he was not frightened of them. Though, of course, he was, wizard though he was. But he took no notice, and they went on singing. But they took no notice, and they went on singing. Burn, burn, tree and fern, shrivel and scorch a fizzling torch to light the night for our delight, yeah, yeah, hey. Bake and toast them, fry and roast them, till beards blaze and eyes glaze, till their hair smells and skins crack. Fat melts and bones black, and cinder lie beneath the sky, so dwarves shall die, and light the night for our delight, ya hey, ya hairy hey, ya hoy. And with that ya hoy, the flames were under Gandalf's tree. In a moment it spread to the others. The bark caught fire, and the lower branches cracked. Then Gandalf climbed to the top of his tree. The sudden splendor flashed from his wand like lightning as he got ready to spring down from on high, right among the spears of the goblins. That would have been the end of him, though he would probably have killed many of them as he came hurtling down like a thunderbolt, but he never leaped. At that, Just at that moment, the Lord of the Eagles swept down from above, seized him in his talons, and was gone. There was a howl of anger and surprise from the goblins. Loud, loud cried the Lord of the Eagles, to whom Gandalf had now spoken. Back swept the great birds that were with him, and down they came with, a hu with hu like huge black shadows. The wolves yammered and gnashed their teeth. The goblins yelled and stamped with rage and flung their heavy spears in the air in vain. Over them swooped the eagles. The dark rush of their beating wings smote them to the floor and drove them far away. Their talons tore at goblins' faces. Other birds flew to the treetops and seized the dwarves. They were scrambling up now as far as they ever dared to go. Poor little Bilbo was very nearly left behind again. He just managed to kept hold of, catch hold of Dory's legs as Dory was borne born off last of all. And up they went together above the tumult and the burning, Bilbo swinging in the air with his arms nearly breaking. Now far below, the goblins and the wolves were scattering far and wide in the woods. A, a few eagles were still circling and sweeping above the battleground. The flames about the trees sprang suddenly up above the highest branches. They went up in crackling fire. There was a sudden flurry of sparks and smoke. Bilbo had escaped only just in time. Soon the light of the burning was faint below, a red twinkle on the black floor. They were high up in the sky, rising all the time in strong, sweeping circles. Bilbo never forgot that flight, clinging to Dory's ankles. He moaned, My arms, my arms! 
But Dory groaned, My poor legs, my poor legs. At the best of times, heights made Bilbo giddy. He used to turn queer if he looked over the edge of quite a little cliff, but he never liked and he never liked ladders, let alone trees, never having had to escape from wolves before. So you can imagine how his head swam now when he looked down between his dangling toes and saw the dark lands opening wide underneath him, touched here and there with the light of the moon on a hillside rock or a stream in the plains. The pale peaks of the mountains were coming nearer, moonlit spikes of rock sticking out of the black shadows. Summer or not, it seemed very cold. He shut his eyes and wondered if he could hold on any longer. Then he imagined what would happen if he did not. He felt sick. The flight ended only just in time for him, just before his arms gave way. He loosed Dory's ankles with, ankles with a gasp and fell onto the rough platform of, of an eagle's ire. There he lay without speaking, and his thoughts were a mixture of surprise at being saved from the fire, and fear lest he fall off that narrow place into the deep shadows on either side. He was feeling very queer indeed in his head by this time after the dreadful adventures of the last three days, with next to nothing to eat, and he found himself saying aloud, Now I know what a piece of bacon feels like when it is suddenly picked up out of the pan on a fork and put back on the shelf. No, you don't, he heard Dory answering, because the bacon knows that it will get back in the pan sooner or later, and it is to be hoped we shan't. Also, eagles aren't forks. Oh no, not a bit like storks. Forks, I mean, said Bilbo, sitting up and looking anxiously at the eagle who was perched close by. He wondered what other nonsense he had been saying, and if the eagle would think it rude. You ought not to be rude to an eagle when you are the only when you are only the size of a hobbit, and are and are up in his ire at night. The eagle only sharpened his beak on a stone and trimmed his feathers and took no notice. Soon another eagle flew up. The Lord of the Eagles bids you to bring your prisoners to the great shelf, he cried, and was off again. The other seized Dory in his claws and flew away with him into the night, leaving Bilbo all alone. He had just strength to wonder what the messenger had meant by prisoners and to begin to think of being torn up for supper like a rabbit when his own turn came. The eagle came back, seized him in his talons by the back of his coat and swooped off. This time he flew only a short way. Very soon Bilbo was laid down, trembling with fear, on a wide shelf of rock on the mountainside. There was no path down onto it, onto it save by flying, and no path down off it except by jumping over a precipice. There he found all the others, sitting with their backs to the mountain wall. The Lord of the Eagles was also there and was speaking to Gandalf. It seemed that Bilbo was not going to be eaten after all. The wizard and the eagle lord appeared to know one another slightly, and even to be on friendly terms. As a matter of fact, Gandalf, who had often been in the mountains, had once rendered a service to the eagles and he healed their lord from an arrow wound. So you see, prisoners had meant prisoners rescued from the goblins only, and not captives of the eagles. As Bilbo listened to the talk of Gandalf, he realized that at last they were going to escape really and truly from the dreadful mountains. He was discussing plans with the great eagle for carrying the dwarves and himself and Bilbo far away and setting them well on their journey across the plains below. The Lord of the Eagles would not take them anywhere near men, where men lived. They would shoot at us with their great bows of yew, he said, for they would think we were after their sheep, and at other times they would be right. No, we are glad to cheat the goblins of their sport and glad to repay our thanks to you, but we will not risk ourselves for dwarves in the southward plains. Very well, said Gandalf. Take us where and as far as you will. We are already deeply obliged to you, but in the meantime we are famished with hunger. I am nearly dead of it, said Bilbo, in a weak little voice that nobody heard. That can perhaps be mended, said the Lord of the Eagles. Later on you might have seen a bright fire on the shelf of a rock. On the shelf of rock, and the figures of the dwarves round it cooking and making a fine roasting smell. The eagles had brought up dry bows of fuel, and they had brought rabbits, hares, and a small sheep. The dwarves managed all the preparations. Bilbo was too weak to help, and anyway he and anyway he was not much he was not much good at skinning rabbits or cutting up meat being used to having it delivered by the butcher all ready to cook. Gandalf, too, was lying down after doing his part and setting the fire going, since Oin and Gloin had lost their tinder boxes. Dwarves have never been taken to matches. Dwarves have never taken to matches, even yet. So ended the adventures of the Misty Mountains. Soon Bilbo's stomach was feeling full and comfortable again, and he felt he could sleep contentedly. Though really, he would have liked a loaf and butter better than bits of meat roasted on sticks. He slept curled up on the hard rock, more soundly than ever he had done in his feather bed and in his own little hole at home. But all night he dreamed of his own house, and wandered in his sleep into all his different rooms, looking for something that he could not find nor remember what it looked like. 
have a good day friends